This week on Chocolate Comics, Alita Battle Angel. We saw it. We're giving you our full review. Also, Bill and Ted 3 could be coming out as early as this Christmas. Plus, Captain Marvel reviews and reactions therein. We're going to break them down for you. All that plus C2E2 updates right here on Chuck Loda Comics. Hey guys, welcome to Chuck Loda Comics, Survivors of the Polar Vortex here in Chicago. Did you guys survive the Polar Vortex? No, man. I was like uh, Jack Torrent from The Shining for a few days. <laughs> it was and then so I just cold. Out. <laughs> it's warm in Chicago right now. It's 39 degrees and we couldn't be happier about it. Right? It's like a 60 degree temperature swing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> guys, welcome to Chuck Loda Comics, your weekly source for nerd news, movie reviews, and comic books. Thanks for subscribing, all you new subscribers. If you're new to the show, take a second. Click that subscribe button. Join the Chuck Loda Comics family. We are here every Sunday breaking down the nerdy news of the week. Chuck Loda Comics is brought to you every single week by the guys at Cold War Games, Arts, and Entertainment. I timed that out perfectly. <laughs> yeah, he <you> did. <laughs> every time. Uh, we've been talking a lot about their new game, Fight Your Friends. This game comes out in February. Your newest character card every single week. We are giving an exclusive look at the characters of the new game, Fight Your Friends. We're up to our third one. This Woo-hoo. week's card is Mercy Sparks. Take a look at this character, man. Mm-hmm. A demon devil woman. I don't want to play favorites, but this might be my favorite card so far <laughs> we drop. Uh, the book uh, that this character comes from is an indie comic book from Devil's Due. The book's called Mercy Sparks. It's by Josh Blaylock and Matt Murhoff. What a gorgeous, gorgeous card. I know. Mercy Sparks is Heaven's secret weapon, a devil girl secretly living among us as a human, hunting rogue angels who've fallen off the grid. What a cool story. How do you like this card, guys? Pretty gorgeous. I it looks it. great. Like, the animation, the drawing is beautiful. Well, that's uh, Matt Murhoff's art, I believe. What a beautiful card. I don't want to play favorites, <laughs> but this might be my favorite card we've Aww. we've rolled out yeah Mercy Matt, sparks looks awesome yeah matt murdoff really throws down on that artwork it's my beautiful. God. it's gorgeous man so for all of these amazing cards just keep on watching chuckle of comics every single sunday and go to fightyourfriends.net the game drops in february on their kickstarter fightyourfriends.net and of course coldwar.us before we get into our nerd news guys your required reading for the week is right over there on that table right there guys have you read these books? We have X-Men. Uh, yeah. Uncanny X-Men 3D. Shauna, how's that going with those glasses over I there? I can't quite get them on, but man, look how cool these are. A the- 3D comic book. Yeah, I from- was flipping through it earlier. It's magnificent. It's like Wolverine's <laughs> coming right at you. It's, it's well. It's worth it just for these glasses. <laughs> these glasses are like mock doctor. Cyclops's, Cyclops's visor, man. Visor. It looks really cool. cool. <laughs> this book is flying off the shelves, guys. It's uh, it's pattern. It's a reprint of I think it was Uncanny X Men two sixty eight. I think uh, Jim Lee art, Chris Claremont writing. It's a classic issue with Captain America and Black Widow and, and the X Men. Check it out because this book is flying off the shelves. If you can get your hands on it, go get it because it comes with three D glasses. I know. How I was cool. expecting some <laughs> massive uh, improvements in three D, but no, it's the classic <laughs> red and blue. Make you dizzy if you can get through the whole book. Straight out of the 90s. I mean, also, it does celebrating his 400th issue, Doctor Strange right over there. Yeah! Issue 400, milestone issue for the Sorcerer Supreme. This is issue 10 of the current uh, run of Doctor Strange. Cool, cool issue. Half the book continues the storyline of the current run of Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. and the other half of the book is little independent short stories. So cool. Uh, about uh, Doctor Strange and Sorcerer Supreme. So definitely pick out these two books at your local comic book shop. And uh, so let's go ahead and get in this week's nerd news, guys. What do you say? Woohoo! Let's do it. All right. All right. All right. So, guys, this first story is for all of you fans of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Hit us with that nerd news, Charles. Man, we reported uh, a couple months ago that uh, Bill and Ted 3 is happening. Bill and Ted Face the Music is coming. Finally, we've been talking about this movie for years, for like a decade they've been talking about it. It's finally happening. Well, the executive producer, Mr. Steven Soderbergh. That was was huge news to me. Steven Soderbergh's executive producer of Dead 3, that's gonna be great. Well, he was (laughs) at the Slam Dance Film Festival, not to be confused with the Sundance Film Festival, 
Our cat's freaking out over there by the fire. He, he's, he's excited, excited about, about Bill. He's Bill and so Tyler. excited. <laughs> uh, he was in front of a captive studio audience at the Slam Dance Film Festival. He said that the film could be released by early Christmas 2019. Oh, wow. man. Christmas 2019. Yeah, they're going up against Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, that might not be yeah, a good, good decision. <laughs> good point. That might not be the best. I don't know. Release time for Bill and Ted 3. If you were to walk into a movie theater and you see two marquees, Star Wars Episode 9, Bill and Ted 3, <laughs> Shauna, which one do you go into? Oh my gosh, I'd have to go into Star Wars and sneak into Bill and Ted afterwards. Good call. <laughs> you just got to do the double feature. You have to. Yeah. 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 Well, Soderbergh went on to say that that would be a good Christmas present. Oh man. Uh, I don't know if I buy this. You know, he might have just been pandering to the uh, Bill and Ted loving audience. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've yeah. just been telling people what they want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, because they haven't even started production yet. They said they were going to start uh, principal <laughs> photography in January of 2019, but I've heard nothing yeah. from anybody saying that they've actually started. He's filming. trying to get the excitement levels up. But I'm I mean, excited. I'm excited. It's cast. They have a synopsis. <laughs> I mean, the film picks up with Bill and Ted enmeshed in the daily life of middle aged family men. The fame and fortune of rock star life has yet to hit their band Wild Stallions. The ongoing lack of success manages to create a tear in time, which oh, then okay. sends the pair off on a new time-traveling adventure to set things right once more. Of course it does, right? That's awesome. Another <laughs> another tear in time. Right? For, and it's written by the same guys that wrote the first two. Too, it so is. It's directed by uh, Dean Pariseau, who is the director of Galaxy Quest and Fun with Dick and Jane. What two very different movies. <laughs> right, right. Who doesn't love those movies? I know. I know, though. I mean, God, if you can make... Bill and Ted 3 look like Galaxy Quest? That'd be awesome. So get excited, guys. I don't know if I believe the fact that it's coming out this Christmas, but at least it's nice to know that the, the train is moving. The ball you know, is things rolling. Things are happening. The ball right. is rolling down the hill for <laughs> Bill and Ted Face the Music. Ralph, you look like you have something to say. I, I feel like uh, I'm excited to see like where those two have been. Like, you know, like yeah. what the story between like uh, how those two surfer-esque kind of dudes like are now in older age, you know? Yeah. Like, what they've been doing since then. I want to see what their families look like. <laughs> right. Or did they marry the princesses? Did they have kids with the princesses? Ooh, yeah. they made do they work in offices like uh, Neo from or, The Matrix? Or do they What's work going at the on? mall and the food court? Who knows? <laughs> mm. Well, Interesting. more news on that as it develops. Big, big announcement for all of you fans of Captain Marvel. Everybody uh -oh. looking forward to Captain Marvel comes out in just like two months. Captain Marvel is right around the corner. So awesome. Well, the first reactions and reviews are in for this movie. They did test screenings for audiences, and they are highly, highly positive. Yes! Oh, God, I thought you were going to say they were terrible. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> seems to really be jazzed about Captain Marvel. We're going to read some of the Twitter uh, reviews from people who did see this. They weren't allowed to tease. Uh, there's no review embargo. I mean, there is, but it hasn't been lifted yet. So everything we see is people on the fringe, people who aren't supposed to be talking about it. But <laughs> God bless them. They're giving us the dirt. Uh, the first one comes from the Trouble Dude, who writes, I've been to a recent Captain Marvel test screening, and I can vouch that Carol Danvers will be the next Marvel's face. Charismatic and imposing, Danvers can came to stay. The movie is amazing, and I'm still in a trance. This is female power, guys. Girl power. Yeah. Girl power. <laughs> All right. I'm excited. <laughs> That's crazy exciting. The next one comes from Et Civil's War. Uh, she writes, just got to see a test screening of Captain Marvel. Let me tell you right now, do not believe the rumors. This movie is beautiful and stunning. The, act, uh, the acting is really good. This is easily one of the best movies ever. You guys are going to love this film. Best movie best ever. Best movies huh? ever. <laughs> also, what rumors? I, you know, the movie's supposed to be great. I Good was question. Say the same thing. I yeah, have not heard, heard any, any bad, bad rumors, rumors about Captain Marvel. I don't know what, oh. what rumors at Civil War is talking about, but best movie ever? That's Freaking <laughs> Ben Hur, <laughs> The <Gump>. Lost Boys, <laughs> and <laughs> Captain Marvel. <laughs> uh, the last one comes from Steve. Frosty Weintraub, uh, the president of Collider.com, he said he didn't see the movie, but he talked to a lot of people that did. He said, hearing Captain Marvel screened, after it ended, everybody was talking about the cat. Uh -huh. Stole the show. Must see this movie stat. That's the biggest thing that's coming out of all these people. They say that Goose the cat <laughs> completely steals the show. Goose uh -huh. is the Groot 
of the movie. That's what your cat's most excited about. That's why he's over here. He knew we'd do the like cat crazy. story eventually. <laughs> he's like, talk about Captain Marvel, please. <laughs> well, the cat uh, originally in the comic books uh, wasn't named Goose. It was named Chewie. They changed the name to Goose because it has a very Top Gun feel. Mm-hmm. This, if you notice from the trailer, so they changed it to Goose. So it's going to be Carol and Goose. No, oh, very no. adorable. Goose actually isn't a cat at all. What? Uh, in the comic books, uh, Carol takes in, in an, an issue of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Carol takes. Uh, Chewie the cat to meet the guardians. Uh, Rocket immediately recognizes this, not as a cat, but it's a flurkin. What did you just call me? A flurkin. You're a flurkin, Shauna. Ah, <laughs> oh, flurk me. A flurkin being a an alien being that looks happens to look exactly like a, an Earth cat. That's awesome. Hmm. So hopefully they go that route. With, <laughs> they must with the comics. Uh, so. That's just so exciting. I'm so stoked about this movie. I just hope the cat survives the movie. Aww, Doesn't... Yeah, of course Good point. Are they going to kill Goose? No, yeah. not at all. How dare they call it Goose. Hollywood has a long history of killing characters named Goose. <laughs> right? <laughs> mm. You know what's interesting, though, is that Rotten Tomatoes, it's currently sitting at a 51% from critics. So really? I don't understand what's happening there. That's straight. Maybe that's the rumors everybody's talking Maybe. about. Maybe. Must be. That's oh, a bummer. Well. I didn't know that. Right? Way to bring things down, Shana. Isn't that weird? Maybe I don't the, understand why. <laughs> maybe the critics are DC fans. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Could be. That or would not the be the Jody first Fosters time. Of the world it's just Jodie Foster leaving a million comments <laughs> under different assumed names. She's trolling? She's it's trolling. Jodie Foster. Not Froster. to completely change the subject, but speaking of Jodie Foster, if you saw the SAG Awards last week, she presented the award for Best Ensemble Cast, which is like the biggest award at the SAG Awards. Okay. Guess who won the Best Ensemble cast? Black Panther. Black Panther. And guess what Jodie Foster, her hating comic book movie ass, did? She went, Black Panther. Yes! Hmm. You're not fooling anybody, Jodie Foster. Come on, We, we know <laughs> you said that comic book movies are the death of cinema. Yeah, yeah. No. And possibly the world, in quotes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think she's just salty she hasn't been cast in one. I would like to see her. In, I'd like to see her join the Marvel universe. I think no. she'd be great. No. Uh, yeah, you're not fooling anybody, Jody. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> uh, last little bit of nerd news, guys. Suicide Squad Two. Who is not excited about? It? We reported, and the world reported uh, a couple months ago that James Gunn, after being fired from the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise over at Marvel, DC recruited him to write Suicide Squad Two. What an awesome, awesome get for Genius DC. move. Absolutely. Well, it was announced Genius this move. week that James Gunn not only is going to write it, but he's also going to direct it. Yes! It's official. He's officially the director of, it's not called Suicide Squad 2, it's called The Suicide Squad. No, it's The Suicide Squad. The <laughs> Suicide Squad. By the makers of The Batman and The Flash is The Suicide Squad. The oh, yeah. Superman. <laughs> coming out August 2021. But the most interesting part of this story is that it's not going to be a direct sequel to the first Suicide Squad. It's going to be a reboot. That's the best news that I've heard come out of this because I was not excited for a Suicide Squad 2. I was more excited when they said James Gunn was signed on. Mm-hmm. Oh, now yeah. I'm even more excited it's saying interesting. That it's not a continuation of the past story. Yeah, well, the, the Hollywood Reporter wrote, uh, the movie is not being labeled a direct sequel but a relaunch. Therefore, Gunn's The Suicide Squad will not be a direct follow-up to David Ayer's film, but rather a soft reboot. Perfect. They went on to write, this one's pretty interesting, uh, that Gunn's focus is to take the franchise in a new direction with a mostly all-new cast of characters and actors. The report also claims that the project is very much rooted in the James Gunn vibe as seen in the Guardians movies. Uh What stands out to me right here is a new cast of characters and actors. Uh, who better bring a group of misfits together and make them lovable characters? Exactly. Than James <laughs> Gunn. James Gunn has Wait, a track record. <laughs> I don't think he has. Has he? Taking unknown mm. comic book properties and turning them into the household names. Right. And what better group than the Suicide Squad to do this? Use the massive rogues gallery uh, in DC and introduce new characters. Now, I don't... He's going to bring Yondu back in Suicide Squad. <laughs> I don't want to see him get rid of Will Smith as Deadshot. Yeah. I thought he crushed it, but... I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I'm okay uh, nixing Margot Robbie and the whole Harley Quinn character from the movie. I th- Thoughts? I think if they nix um, Margot Robbie, they're just going to have to not have Harley Quinn in the movie. Because I think people you, that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, she that, takes up the spotlight. Everybody yeah. wants to see her as much as the Joker. Well, know? they definitely won't recast it because Margot right. Robbie has the Bird of Prey movie coming out uh, a few months before this. Exactly. So, But, you know, let, let Harley Quinn go off and do her own thing. That's I don't like think you need that... that Hate mail coming soon. 
<laughs> her her role in the first Suicide Squad was just a very sexualized character, having her walk around in, in short shorts and taking her top off and her go-go boots. You don't necessarily need that to sell tickets. They could have done that better, though, you know? I, they don't have to do angles from her ass, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> she's just there on her own. She right. doesn't have to do anything. You guys are just saying these things because I'm sitting here. <laughs> no, I'm really serious, dude. I want to see... No. no James Gunn true. is also really good at taking female characters and instead of sexualizing them, make them powerful. Like it's Gamora true. and Gamora Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Yeah. You Absolutely. can have female characters without Nebula. putting them in and Nebula. Mm-hmm. Powerful, yeah. strong female characters that aren't wearing go-go boots, aren't wearing shiny short shorts. <laughs> Not poo-pooing uh, Margot Robbie by any means, but I don't think you necessarily have to do that. And I'm excited to see a new female character. Um, yeah. I just hope they keep Will Smith because I thought Deadshot was badass. <laughs> Maybe they'll recast Harley Quinn uh, with uh, Dave Bautista. You know? That's, okay, yeah, I would love to see. If, if you're going to put anybody in short shorts and go-go boots, hopefully it's Dave Bautista. <laughs> I wonder if Dave Bautista would be in the movie. He's already he's said he huge, wants to be. He's, he's already said James he wants to. Fan. He doesn't want to jump ship, but he wants to kind of do them both. I wonder if he'd be like Croc or something. Killer Croc? Or, yeah. Dave Bautista? Yeah. Maybe he's uh, El Diablo? That would be cool. That'd be cool. Oh, I don't want to see that character come back. <laughs> you didn't like El Diablo? I thought he was one of he was behind Margot and Will Smith. He was probably one of Well, Captain Boomerang was badass too. He should be King Shark. That's the other thing. <laughs> if King Shark, Dave Batista is King Shark. King yeah, Shark. now we're now call us James. We got gold here. I say we just want your body, and then we're just gonna put a shark head right over it. <laughs> right. Well, the other problem with, with with bringing back Margot Robbie is she can't help but steal the spotlight. Yeah. It's gonna be. The Harley Quinn movie, and I think one of the other problems with the first Suicide Squad is that nobody else, all these other cool characters, didn't get a moment to shine. I wanted to see a lot more Captain Boomerang, a lot more of, you know, El Diablo and Enchantress and all these cool characters. Well, maybe not Killer Croc. (laughs) Well, it's like we said earlier, right? It's like, uh, it's not always a set uh, group of characters. It's like the Avengers. It's always a rotating uh, group of... uh, Right. You can always introduce new characters. I mean, Suicide Squad, if done right, could go on forever. You could have a whole and introduce new characters. Some people die. Some people get reintroduced. It's right. just people in this prison that you can. I mean, you can have an unlimited number of characters in this prison <laughs> you can choose from. Plus, they're villains. You know, you can get rid of them like that. Exactly. No point. one will cry if they die. <laughs> so, Shauna. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. We we were invited to a pre-screening of Alita. Battle Angel, mm-hmm. the James Cameron produced, Robert Rodriguez directed film. It comes out, I think, February 14th. We were lucky enough to go to a pre screening, and guys, I was not excited about Elite Battle Angel. Uh-uh. I didn't really dig the trailers, they just didn't quite do it for me. It seemed like a CGI mess. Said, but I'm happy to say, eyes so big. It, it was great. <laughs> it was I great. enjoyed the living hell out of Elite Battle Angel. I'm surprised it's currently only sitting on a 33 on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. But. Oh. It's really, really good. It's worth your time. If you don't know anything about it, um, it's, it's, it's an action-packed story of uh, one young woman's journey to discover the truth of who she is and her fight to change the world. That's, it, it was so good. I the, mean, the set building was incredible. Yeah. It's interesting to find out that this wasn't all shot on a green screen. They actually built these massive sets, really? these huge cities. We didn't build the whole city, but they built... Oh, like no, all, the, all the streets and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's on a back lot somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's a huge <laughs> hovering spaceship in the middle of the sky. Amazing. <laughs> it looked amazing. It Absolutely really incredible. It's uh, a technological dark age following a pinnacle of achievement far beyond where we are right now. Basically, the world, it's set in 20, 2536, I think is the year that the movie's set in. Somewhere way in the future. Right. Apparently, <laughs> the te- technology was crazy high super duper the pinnacle of technology but then there was a big war and now society has fallen in this technological dark age uh cybernetic technology is sort of a way of life Mm -hmm. um people are like robocop they're walking around with a brain and a face but they're all robotic yeah there's a roving band of like poachers that will attack you and steal your parts oh no that's just rocket no, yeah. <laughs> He's just stealing everybody's eyeballs. Take and your eyes. So, Shauna, your excitement level going into Alita, and how'd you think when you walked out? Going into Alita, I was not excited at all. I just, just the mention of James Cameron, I, I hate James Cameron. You hate no James mess, Cameron? I just, don't, I just don't like him. I don't, I don't like, like James Cameron's movie love ass. for 3D. I don't like his, yeah. And the fact that it wasn't 3D, I'm just not a big fan. But 
going in there, seeing it in 3D, it actually made me feel like, you know what, 3D is not that bad. Or maybe it was just the movie itself. That... I love 3D movies. Yeah. Do you really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't stand it. I would love nothing more than for 3D just to go away. <laughs> oh, no. I can't stand it. Something about having what's ever in the foreground out of focus well, when I make takes my me out of every movie. scene. You can come to. Well, just don't put anything in the foreground. We'll be fine. I'm okay with the background being out of focus. It's like when you walk in front of a you know, telephone oh, yeah, pole okay. and it's just blurry. It's just, I don't know. Something mm-hmm. about 3D kind of takes me out of the scene. Okay. And this movie, I don't think really needed to be 3D. But yeah. it's James Cameron and he loves 3D. He put freaking Titanic out in 3D. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. He re released oh. Titanic in <laughs> that 3D. In 3D. I know. The boat so, goes down sideways. This, this, it's not like it's coming at you. Floating oh, God, piece of iceberg ice almost hit me, man. Gonna hit me. <laughs> so, guys, I highly recommend you check it out. What an amazing cast of actors! No kidding. Uh, playing Alita, young Rosa Salazar, amazing. Yeah. So dramatic, so wonderful. She crossed the role, very emotion capture uh, type of role. Mm-hmm. Because you know, like Ralph was saying, her eyes are really big. She looks very CG, but the CG is spectacular. Yeah, it's great. The trailers made the CG look like it was going to be really bad. It was so good. Very good. Give them the Oscar right now. Other stars: Mahershala Ali, Christoph Waltz, Jennifer Connelly, yes. Chicago's own Michelle Rodriguez, and Jackie Earl Haley. You know Jackie Earl Haley. He played Rorschach in uh, The Watchmen. He played Freddy Krueger in the really (laughs) crappy remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. Wow, that is a great cast. There's an amazing cast. And kudos to James Cameron for forking over the money and getting real actors. That's a good point. There's a lot of drama in this movie. There's a lot of emotion. And people like Christoph Waltz really crushed it. I could have used a lot more of Mahershala Ali. Mm -hmm. Also Jennifer Jennifer Connelly. Connelly. You've got Academy Award winning actors and you really didn't give them enough screen time. If I'm... Gonna poo-poo one thing about the movie. Loved it. It looked great. It flowed great. But they tried to pack so much into it. I feel like the plot had a hard time keeping up with the pace of the movie. Sure. Because you're just going from one amazing fight sequence after another. Just boom, 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 boom. One amazing action scene after another. Plot kind of has a hard time Mm -hmm. keeping up. I'll be curious to hear what the people that have read the comics. Like, I know it's based off a manga comic, Mm -hmm. correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't read it. I haven't read it. I don't know. I'm really. I, I'm I, curious to hear their thoughts on the movie. It's funny. If you, you can watch the cartoon uh, version of it. Uh-huh. I was flipping through it on YouTube. It's the whole thing is on YouTube. You can watch it. It's, I think it's called Battle Angel Alita. Oh, uh, okay. As I'm flipping through it, it's like it looks exactly like the movie. Really? Yeah. They've um, they tried really really hard to make the comic in Real the life. film. That's yeah. awesome. Good. Yeah. And they crushed it. Make sure to leave your comments below and subscribe and tell us what you think about the movie. Please and in do. in comparison to the uh, book. When you guys see it, if you've read the book, leave us a comment like Ralph just said. Let us know what you think. If you hated it, let me know why you hated it. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up as we do every single week with a C2E2 update. Yes! What's C2E2. going on there? Photo ops are now on sale. Mm-hmm. Photo ops just went on sale this Friday, this past Friday. They're selling out crazy fast. Is Don Cheadle going to be there? No. <laughs> but uh, Paul Rudd, the most expensive photo op they have right now is Paul Rudd. It's $170. Saturdays are already sold out. Wow. Which they, 170 in comparison to like other Comic-Con, that's not that bad. I mean, yeah, I know. C2E2's photo ops start at 40 bucks, people. That's great. Alicia Silverstone, $60. Right. And the beauty of what C2E2 does with their photo ops is it's not per person. You can split that with four people. You yep. can have up to four people in your photo. And it's not, you know, $170 a piece. It's right. you just split it. Oh, that's fantastic. So it's crazy. For like yeah. a $40 photo op, it's only 10 bucks a piece. You can pay $15 each and get a picture with Alicia Silverstone. Oh, man. Yep. <laughs> no, I know. And Ralph, it. you're I'm not even going to be there. Guys. I'm going with you guys. That's it. All Ralph's right. got to be at a tattoo convention, unfortunately, this same weekend. Also announced some really great comic book crea- creators. Chris Claremont. Yes. We just talked about him with Uncanny X-Men 3D. Mm-hmm. Chris Claremont's going to be there signing... X-Men books, Daryl DMC McDaniels from Run DMC. Yeah. Daryl makes comics. That's right. DMC, that's what he does. <laughs> uh, that's actually his book, Daryl Makes Comics. Uh, Ramon Perez and many, many, many others. They just announced like, I think like 20 new comic book creators this week. So cool. They're coming out. So I'm the, so excited. The guests are starting to roll out, guys. It's the 10-year anniversary of C2E2. And Tickets are on it. sale. Get your photo op. Because they're going to sell out pretty yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah. Really quickly. <laughs> Shauna, what photo op do you want to get? Uh, Ralph Macchio yes. and William Zabka. William Zabka. <laughs> Duh. The Cobra Kai mashup. Combo. We're totally doing that. 110 bucks for the pair. 
Are they going to be like in the same booth doing it yeah. together? Or? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that's uh-huh. going to be great. So we can totally you can recreate. I think they're sixty bucks each, or you can do the pair for a hundred. Oh. You got to take that little the little drum thing where you're like. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. So many possibilities. <laughs> I'm gonna get my referee shirt, and I'm gonna have them actually fight each other. No, they need to be the coaches, and we'll get the other people there you go. Photo to be fighting each other. Leave us your ideas <laughs> on what we should do for the Williams Abka Ralph Macchio photo team up. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our show, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Lots of amazing stuff. Bill and Ted 3, Captain Marvel looks awesome. Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn, and of course, Alita Battle Angel. Check it out when it comes out February 14th. Thanks for joining us here, Ralph. And Sean, oh, of course, you're going to be here. <laughs> well, thanks. I do live here, so That's I guess true. I'm going to be here. You live in the studio. <laughs> I'm moving in. I just want I just want to have this as my background. Just sit around and read time. comics all day <laughs> long. That's what we books. do. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, join us here every single Sunday for comic book reviews, movie news, everything happening in the world of fandom. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button, please do. And we'll see you here next Sunday. Have a fantastic week. Oh, bye-bye.